Dear Diary, I can't believe this year has almost come to an end. When I started writing in here just before school started, I thought I would be consistent in writing every week. Instead, I have six entries to show for four months. I'm so terrible. I went through my other entries today and there's so much I left out. I wrote everything in the heat of the moment and never really took time to slow down and appreciate everything. In a way though, I'm kind of happy for how stupid I sound in those older writings because I don't feel or think I'm so stupid now. I can always look back and realize how much I've grown. I wonder how future me will see the Becky writing this entry. I hope I'm so much cooler then than I am now. As heated as I was in my other entries, one thing was and still is true. I love my friends. Kit Kat, Lindsay, and Goose are all so incredible. And I can't be more thankful for how they've helped me through the toughest of times. I thought this diary would be the most important thing in my life. Really, it's the nights I've spent with all of them that have been the most important. The only reason I know how to put my feelings into words is because of them. And to think when I moved here, I thought Cindy and Ryan would be the most important people in my life. Then again, if it weren't for Cindy, I wouldn't have met the Evans twins. And I hated Cindy so much that it forced me to not be a pushover and to stick out for myself. Even if I'm not exactly proud of what I did. She still doesn't know I TP'd her house, by the way. So maybe Cindy was important to my life, just not in the way that I expected her to be. Nothing terribly dramatic has really happened these past few weeks. And honestly, I'm really happy for that. I used to think that something amazing needed to happen constantly in my life or it would be boring and have no meaning. I've started to realize how stressful living a dramatic life can be. I realized this last weekend when Kit Kat, Lindsay, Goose, and myself went hiking. Lindsay and Kit Kat knew of some trail that was what they called easy. I would not call it easy. I had to stop so many times to catch my breath. I couldn't believe how hard walking outside is. It took way longer than we planned because my legs suck. Yet when we made it to the top, the view was beautiful. On one side, you could see all of West Livingston. And on the other side, you could see nothing but desert and mountains. It's so weird how small everything looks when you get a view from up higher. I feel so free out here in the nature, away from everything and everyone. Our town seems so big from the inside, and at the same time on the outside, it doesn't look big enough to matter. I guess what I mean is, inside West Livingston is everything I know. All my problems, my worries, my success and joy, everything. Likewise, on the other side of the mountain, nothing is affected by anything that's been happening. The rest of the world will keep going as it always has, regardless of what we do. So why should I spend all my energy worrying about things that don't matter? Someday, I'm going to leave this town. I have to, right? I mean, things won't be the same forever. Kit Kat and Lindsay are a year ahead of me. What will I do when I'm a senior and they're in college? I can't expect them to stay because I'm here. And I don't need to stay for anything if I don't want to. I can go and become whatever and wherever I want to be. We spent a long time up there just talking about that. What we wanted to do and what we believed life was for. It got pretty deep. And then after we said all we could, we just sat there. We didn't say anything. Nothing needed to be said. We were all glad to be there with each other. It was probably only five minutes, but it honestly felt like an hour of silence. Then. Lindsay broke the silence with an accidental burp and we couldn't stop laughing. It was exactly the break we needed from such a deep moment. We were ready to head back down the trail, but my legs were still tired and I didn't want to move. So Lindsay and Kit Kat went ahead while Goose helped me stand up. It took me a few seconds, long enough to where I couldn't see the Evans twins anymore. I had one last look around and when I looked back at Goose, he was leaning in and before I knew it, he kissed me and holy crap, it was the greatest moment of my life. Of course I kissed him back, like why wouldn't I? It was so perfect and romantic. I could honestly write about it for hours on how amazing it was to finally be kissed by him. 
but I don't think I have enough pages or ink for it. I'll spare the details and keep you from getting jealous. Let's just say it was like the hottest thing ever. Like it puts any kiss from any rom-com you may have seen to shame. Goose is a super good kisser too. I think I haven't really kissed anyone else, so I wouldn't really know, but I was really into it and it was what I heard what a good kiss should feel like. I was flying high for the rest of the day. It was seriously like a jet took off from my feet and I never came down. Kit Kat and Lindsay keep saying that I'm Twitter-pated. I just feel like everything is going good. For the first time since getting here, I'm really happy. Christmas vacation has started and I'm so excited to be taking a break from school with nothing planned but hot chocolate and Christmas specials. It seriously is one of the greatest times of the year. You're about to witness the laziest Becky of all existence. I'll be sleeping in, eating junk food, wearing my PJs all day. It's going to be awesome. I'll also be hanging out more with Kit Kat, Lindsay, and Goose. I'll definitely be seeing Goose again because I don't want that kiss to be a one-time thing. Yeah, this Christmas break is going to be great. Love and always, Becky. <laughs>